know, we all get angry. Jesus got angry. Being angry is an emotion. It's just like being happy or sad or static. And so we handle it the wrong way, though. Anger has a tendency to tear marriages apart. The Bible, well, it tells us to be angry and to do not sin. So what does that mean? It means that if I'm angry with Nancy, if I have a choice of, I have a choice of how to react. If I yell at her or throw something at her, I've sinned. If I say in a controlled way, I'm really angry and we need to talk this through, I haven't sinned. See the difference? In life and in marriage, anger is a red flag and lets us know something is wrong. Then we have a choice. This is where most of us get off base. We don't realize we have a choice in our behavior. This we say things like, I hit him because he made me mad. No, you didn't. You hit him because you chose to do so. Here's an example. Aiden and Avery are having an argument. Avery is standing her ground and fighting back verbally. It makes Aiden more and more mad. Avery has decided that this time she will not back down. She will not let Aiden overpower her with his words. Finally, in anger and frustration, Aiden shoves her. She falls backwards on the floor. So Aiden tells me the following week that Avery made him shove her. He doesn't see that he made a choice. Granted, the choice happened very quickly, but it happened. So I ask him this. If Jesus was in the room watching the fight, would you have shoved Avery? His answer quickly was no. So if you could make the choice not to with Jesus in the room, you made a choice to with him not in the room. Anger is not a sin. It's how we handle anger determines whether it's sin or not. Aiden sinned when he shoved Avery. When we act out our anger, we change our marriage relationship from friend to foe. And that takes us in the opposite direction of an awesome marriage. Nancy and I were married for five years before we had kids. We needed every bit of those five years plus a few more to figure out our lives together. Both of us would say that we seldom, if ever, argued with someone in a previous relationship. I never remember getting mad at anyone I ever dated. Not that my list was very long. So it's somewhat of a shock that we both became instant fighting experts. Our fights made me think that there was no way at all we would ever make it. Nancy would dig in her heels, and so would I. And there was no way we were giving in to each other. So this became our cycle. We'd fight, we'd yell, we'd scream, we wouldn't listen to a word the other was saying. And the louder we yelled, the madder we got, and the less we heard. Each of us was waiting for something that was never going to happen. We were waiting for the other person to back down. Finally, we'd stop yelling and not speak to each other for a day or so. Then we began to feel bad and kind of miss each other and tell each other we're sorry. And then we had a honeymoon period. We talked again, had fun, made love, but never resolved anything. The good period could last a few days, weeks, or sometimes even a few months. But the cycle always continued. And this is what I observed. Even though the honeymoon periods would be good, the fights got worse and tore a little more ev our marriage every time they happened. From the friend versus foe standpoint, the friendship always eroded a little more. And that erosion settled on the foe side of the relationship. If it had not stopped, we would not have made it. Nobody gets married to have someone to fight with for the next 50 years, right? Finally, we realized we were killing our relationship. When we were not fighting, we valued the relationship a lot. We had to learn how to resolve conflict or we'd continue the cycle over and over again. Probably the biggest help for us was learning how to listen to each other. When Nancy was talking, I needed to listen to her so I understood what she was saying. I needed to be able to respond in a way that let her know I heard her. If I listened and didn't understand, I needed to ask her to say it again until I got it. The same went for her. You know what was really cool? Probably at least 90% of the time simply understanding each other solved the problem. So many of our arguments and fights came from misunderstanding or making assumptions about each other. And with those taken off the table, there was little to fight about. So how about you? Do you relate to the anger honeymoon cycle? Are there issues as a couple that you never seem to resolve? What about starting with just listening to each other really, really well and see what God does with that?